Good day fellow modelers. Mr. Handy back with another handy review. Uh, today we're going to take a peek at uh, In the Claws of the Tomcat. This is a uh, book by Tom Cooper. Uh, it's about, uh, it's just basically a history of the F-14 Tomcat uh, in use by the U.S. Navy in the Middle East. Uh, specifically Iran and Iraq from 87 to 2000. Uh, this is number 29 of the Middle East at War. Uh, and the Middle East at War series is a, a really good series, actually. Um, Tom Cooper has done quite a few of them. Um, I don't know if anybody is familiar with Tom Cooper. Uh, Tom Cooper did... Uh, did a uh, absolutely fabulous book many years ago. Um, it was, uh, yeah, there's my Tomcat. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, Tom Cooper did uh, a wonderful book many years ago uh, on the Iran-Iraq War. Uh, he's done a couple of uh, Ospreys. Uh, I believe he did uh, the one on the Tomcat in Iranian service and I believe he also did the F4 one in Iranian or in Iranian service. And then he's done a whole bunch for uh this series as well. Um he did a four part series on the Iran Iraq war and then uh there was more information that had come out so he re-released I believe two or three of the issues uh with extra info. Um he did uh uh, Arab Migs or Migs and Arab I can't remember the name but there's a five part five part series on a, a major five part series on the uh, Arab Migs from 1950 all the way to uh, I think it was late 70s um, there's a two parter in there as well that's uh Basically, the uh, War of Attrition and the Yom Kippur War. Um, lots of info in those books. And uh, lots of beautiful, beautiful line drawings. Um, and I believe he's uh, started doing them again. Uh, Migs and Arab Service uh, in these small versions as well. So, anyways, let's get into it. I'm not going to talk a lot on this one because this is more of a history book. So, you won't have to listen to me babylon but uh there's a couple things i will mention in but uh, most of this is just uh, basic history so we'll uh there's your contents and we'll just kind of get into it there's your uh introduction acknowledgement and then we kind of get into uh a history of why the tomcat was developed through the first couple of pages Uh, some nice information on Tomcat's Tomcat units, uh, where they were de where they were deployed, what ship they were deployed on, uh, what their unit name was, and uh, or unit number was, and uh, um, just some notes as well. So there's one here from seventy four to eighty nine or to ninety nine, and then there's another one here from eighty seven to seventy one. So. Again, just a lot of history. Uh, we get into uh, some information on the uh, forces or the opposing forces that uh, the Tomcat would end up taking on. Uh, there's a bit on the MiG-23 Flogger. There's a bit on the Foxbat Fulcrum. You start talking about uh, uh, Tomcats taking on uh, F-4 Phantoms in Iran. Uh, over here is... Uh, just uh, the different, uh, these, these are basically uh, the Soviet missiles. So, and we've got all their, the Soviet designation, we've got the NATO designation and what they actually, you know, what their homing system is. Um, again, this is more of uh, operations of the Tomcat. Um, it doesn't really... It doesn't really get into it in here about Iranian Tomcats, but it does talk about uh, how uh, Iran 
basically saved the Tomcat. If it wasn't for Iran, the Tomcat would never have been developed. Uh, so it was their money that continued the program. Then we get into the Kuwaiti crisis, and that was just before Desert Storm. And then again, some more air wing operations during Desert Storm. It's the different aircraft and all the carrier air wings and what aircraft were being deployed and all that stuff. Um, this here is a wonderful little anecdote, and there's a couple of them in here. Uh, it's a nice little story about uh, this... Uh, uh, Falcon, the Falcon 50, and uh, it was equipped with the uh, uh, Mirage 1 or Mirage F1 EQ radar, and uh, it could carry the weapons that the Mirage could carry. Uh, I believe there was air to air weapons that it could carry, and it was also equipped with the um, Exocet. And uh, it was this aircraft, there was only one of them, it was this aircraft that ended up uh, taking out the USS Stark in uh the mid 80s so interesting interesting uh little story again more stuff they talk about the exocet threat in here uh some information on the rules of engagement and then they start talking about uh some of the engagements some interceptions uh by iraqis iraqi uh, Fox Bat interceptions, Iraqi Falcom interceptions, Iraqi Mirage interceptions. Um, again, another anecdote about uh, the rear warning or rear warning receiver. Uh, here are some intercepts uh, or sort interceptor units uh, where they were based. Iraqi interceptor units. The name of the actual squadron, where they were based, and what they were using. Uh, more information here with. Uh, Iraqi fish bed intercepts. And now we get into these beautiful line drawings that Tom does. I have to say, this is this is the highlight of, of a lot of these books by Tom, is uh, these wonderful line drawings that he does. Um, they're only... The only suggestion I have is that I wish we could get a couple of... Uh, three-sided view of some of these like the uh, uh, Iraqi MiG-20 or the Iraqi uh, Mirages and their camouflage or even the MiG-23s with the camouflage so that as a modeler you could actually use that as your reference for painting whatever it is you wanted. Uh, this will look familiar to those of you who served in Iraq um, in the goal in 91. Um, this looks very familiar to me. Uh, this is the, uh, this is the map and all the areas with Iraq in the middle. Uh, you got Saudi Arabia here, Syria, Turkey, and Iran, and then Kuwait down in here. So that was on the news every night, but it was also in our, uh, in our ops rooms when we were, or in the ops rooms and, uh, in the, uh, briefing rooms of those of us that served in 91 so um again we're getting still kind of talking about uh events that happened during uh the gulf war with the tomcats and interceptions here's a bunch of different interceptions that happened this little story is interesting um i didn't know about this story but uh um Apparently, there had been a, a guy in Russia named uh, Tala, uh, Talakachev. Talakachev, I believe. It's hard. To, Russian names are hard for me to pronounce sometimes. So, uh, so forgive me for the proper pronunciation. Uh, anyways, it's it's a story about this guy who used to work for um, a Russian uh, radar company. I think it was Fazatron that he was working for, and I. Love the name, Russian name, Phasmatron is such a 80s, <laughs> it's such an 80s word, but uh, basically Phasmatron, uh, Phasmatron did all the radars for uh, Soviet aircraft, and uh, this guy went to the CIA, because he was a little upset about how he was being treated, 
and uh, ended up leaking secrets about the radars to the CIA, who then end up giving it to the U.S. Air Force to upgrade all their electronic countermeasure systems. And this kind of gives uh, a, a, an account of uh, what had happened and kind of kind of gives the kudos to this guy for the success uh, or for some of the success of uh, very few uh, air-to-air -air, uh, losses by the Allies uh, during Desert Storm. Um, basically, he gave the radars for everything from the uh, MiG-21, MiG-23, the 2931, and the, even the Su-27. So... It's a really interesting story. I wish we could see more of these types of things, but uh, yeah. Another interesting story. I didn't read this one yet, so I can't really comment on it. Um, we start talking about uh, the Tomcats' role in uh, Operation Desert Storm. Um, and then it talks about some of the engagements. Um, there was a Fox Bat engagement. Um, apparently, uh, in one of these, uh, a MiG-25 claimed an F-14, uh, kill, and, uh, the F-14, as far as I can remember, I might be wrong on this, the F-14 claimed an MiG-25 kill, but the MiG-25 actually came back to base, and, uh, the F-14 apparently went back to base as well, so, um, but... It's interesting. Here's another little interesting bit of information. It's the uh, name of Rocky Air Bases, where they are, and just a bunch of notes. Um, but again, we're going just, this is all basically talks about different uh, engagements, things that the uh, Tomcat crews dealt with in uh, Desert Storm, some uh, stories about radio discipline. Uh, this is another one of these interesting stories where um, this uh, there was a guy that was a, a Roland anti-aircraft uh, battery operator, and uh, I guess he had lit up uh, some A6s, and they fired off their harm at him, and uh, it barely missed, and he was able to get a shot back and apparently took down an A6, so... There's a uh, uh, story about the loss of Cl uh, Club Leaf 212. I don't know too much about that one. Dogfight with Foxbat. I believe that's the story uh, about the uh, the Tomcat and the MiG-25 claims to downing each other. Uh, again, some more stuff about them in the uh, Gulf. Um, as I said, this one goes all the way to 2000, I believe. So, uh, they talk about, uh, some of the final engagements, but they also talk about Desert Fox in here. Um, Operation Desert Fox. Uh, and then they go into, uh, some of the information about, uh, F-14s during, uh, uh, I think they go into Operation Iraqi Freedom here a little bit as well. And then, nice big bibliography of all the different books that were used. And then Tom's footnotes. So, again, this one is a uh, is a good one for uh, history. It's got some really good stories. Uh, Tom Cooper. Uh, I I you know what I give him kudos. Um, it's nice to hear the other side of the story. I know that we get a lot of information, uh, from uh, the winners, right? I mean, uh, the Desert Storm, we got a lot of information from the Allies in that one and, and how things went. But Tom, uh, comes from the other side and it's nice to hear those opposite sides. And it's nice to hear, uh, about those things that you maybe don't hear about. Uh, I'm, I remember him talking about, uh, um, an engagement that uh, F-15s uh, were engaged by uh, a group of MiG-25s. And during that engagement, 
apparently, uh, MiG-25 had said that they had taken out an F-15. And, of course, I mean, the U.S. Air Force said no. But what ended up coming out of that is that actually one of the F-15s was hit with a uh, uh, an acrid a6 acrid from uh, the I believe it was an a6 acrid from one of the mig-25s uh, took out its engine and uh, they still landed at base but uh, I'd never heard of that story and it was nice to hear that because like I said you only hear uh, about how you know the allies had won this and they basically bulldozed Iraq the Iraqi uh, the Iraqi Air Force and uh, it was nice to hear these different stories so uh, this I you can get from Helion. You can get it from their site. This one I got from a casemate. They had a sale on, so I picked this up. Um, but you can get it, uh, I think, right or you can get it right from Helion store uh, in the UK. Uh, in North America, casemate is, I believe, the the best bet uh, unless you want to pay major shipping from the UK. Uh, I, I think this is uh, definitely worth picking up. If you're a, definitely, if you're a Tomcat enthusiast, um, if you're interested in a Tomcat in the Middle East, which is, you know, one of my interests, this was definitely worth picking up. So, uh, if you've got, uh, if you've got any comments, let me know, put them down in the comment section. Um, looking at uh, a couple more of these, uh, I'll try and do the uh, Iran Iraq War uh, in the series. And I think I had the uh, Moscow's or Russia's involvement in the Syrian conflict. So there are for us. So we'll take a peek at that one too. But uh, yeah, go out, take a peek, uh, pick it up uh, at your favorite bookstore or wherever you can get it uh and uh yeah that's it for this review i uh, thank you for watching and uh happy modeling thanks a lot from mr handy